Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Uh, we had different sessions to know uh, what is the uh, origin of focolare movement, what is the main aspect, what are the main aspects of the spirituality of unity of the movement, and also what are the realities of life in Monte uh, as a place that is part of the formation process for those who want to join movement. We had uh, lots of opportunities for interactions, uh, either formally in the sessions or over meals. And last night we had a very special event with the all inhabitants of Monte, uh, where we had some uh, beautiful uh, performances and also some sharing. And also we watched a video about Wings of Unity, uh, where Professor Piero Coda and I had talked about our relation and philosophy of Wings of Unity. And then at the end, I talked about my understanding of significance of spirituality of Focolare for humanity, and how I think uh, this is something that uh, has to grow so that we would reach a point of having a united humanity. We might be a small in number, but first of all, the people who are here are uh, very much uh, diverse with respect to the communities that they belong to. So they represent many different uh, parts of the Shia community. And also in Monte, we have you know, some 30 nationalities who are present. So in a sense, it's meeting of nations, but in their representatives. We are at the same time that introducing this spirituality to new people, but we are also ourselves learning more that what God wants from us. When we learn it here, then throughout the year, we have lots of opportunities to share this with other people in other platforms, as we have been doing last time, uh, in different countries, different you know settings, religious, academic, you know. Uh, settings, we have presented what we have been discussing here or in the piano. So we use our uh, capacity, although our capacity is limited, but uh, God can put blessing in this little work that we do. I think uh, the youngsters are actually very much themselves concerned about uh, peace in the world and about uh, having no violence because this is their world and future is belonging to them and they don't want to, no one wants to inherit a world full of you know tensions and wars you know so i think they very much want this but we have to give them hope and i think we need to give them examples sometimes what we do is a small but it's not important why because we are creating a sample if the sample works then millions of people can follow that sample, that model. So we are, in a sense, in a laboratory. You are making the first sample, and when people see, automatically they plug in. Because every person in his or her uh, you know, conscience loves peace, loves unity. They just need to realize that this is possible, and this is greater than any differences that we have. We can belong to different cultures, different ethnicities, different traditions, but humanity, which is common in us, and God above us, who is also common, are enough to make us feel members of the same family. So I hope we can offer together this testimony to the people of the world. And there is so much attraction when this is offered together that I don't think anyone would be able to resist or to accuse it that this is sectarian or this is you know, selfish because they see that our love for God has united us. We are not calling people towards ourselves. We are together calling people towards God and good of humanity. Right. The tragic event in New Zealand was another eye-opener for us that no matter 
how much people have access to resources, libraries, you know, internet, you know, courses in universities. But we should not think that the level of understanding is automatically increasing. It seems that we live in a world that even neighbors may not know that much about each other. Even people who live in the same country or neighboring countries, they may not know that much about each other and this may develop suspicion and even it can lead to hostility. As our first Imam says, people are hostile towards what they don't know. So what we saw in New Zealand was very uh, painful that uh, innocent people in sacred place and sacred time of worship were killed in a very brutal way. And I think we need to work on few areas. One is building relations with communities to know each other more, to visit each other more, uh, to overcome prejudice and stereotyping that unfortunately some ir irresponsible politicians or media you know, try to create. Uh, you know, people could use this as an excuse to increase division and start attacking each other, condemning each other. But uh, thanks to God, what we saw in New Zealand was that both Muslims and non-Muslims uh, didn't let anyone to take advantage of this incident and try to cause friction and division. Indeed, the whole society, uh, starting with uh, prime minister, politicians, religious leaders, uh, grassroots people, they showed their sympathy and support and stood by the side of victims and their families. And I think this was something positive that can uh, say that uh, came out of that uh, painful event. But I very much hope that lots of community relations will be built and also we work on regulating games and films and entertainment industry so that we would not see in future uh, things like this in our uh, schools, in our you know, markets or you know, in our airports or in our places of worship. I have deep concerns and I feel pain of humanity, but at the same time, I have lots of hope because I know that first of all, humanity has always gone through lots of ups and downs, but has never stopped. And secondly, theologically, I am convinced that behind everything that we see on the surface, God is at work. And I am sure that God would never let humanity to go to the point of destruction. God gives us chance. God helps us you know, to prove ourselves. But when it becomes very critical time, God comes. Actually, history shows us that in the time of despair, in the time of darkness, actually God is more at work. Greatest revelations come when everywhere is dark. So as a faithful person, I have hope in God. And I think if my faith increases, one sign is that my hope also should increase. So I hope no day comes that we lose our hope because this means that we lose our faith.